put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Shadows Mood Review. This is apparently based somewhat on the old soap opera, I think, show by the same title, which I've never seen and had no idea existed until I heard of this movie and realized it was apparently based on that show. From what little research I bothered to do, I learned that apparently it was essentially meant to be a serious show with intriguing storylines and sometimes it got campy because they had to rush through production on episodes so much that sometimes the set would fall apart in the background or an actor would flub a line and it wouldn't get cut out. So, yeah. Now, first I should talk about the plot. Barnabas Collins had an affair with a servant, Angelique, who turned out to be a witch. So he kind of wished he'd known that when he dumped her, or before that rather, but as payback, she kills his wealthy upper-class parents and Barnabas's love, Josette, by having... Actually, I shouldn't give it away. It's a really good opening. And turning Barnabas himself into a vampire. And having the town form an angry mob and lock him in a coffin. This all took place in 17... in the 1770s, thereabouts, and Barnabas is now waking up after having been down there for nearly two centuries. So he wakes up in the 1970s and he has to readjust some. He finds his beloved Collinwood, the family estate, in a rather sorry state. He, it, it has pretty much just been let decay. And the Collins business is also quite falling apart. And he vows to restore the both the home and the name of Colin and Collins. Now one of the one of the people in the in, in Collinwood looks an awful lot like his long deceased fiance or lover, I don't remember exactly anyway, Josette and he of course wants to rekindle the love, if you can call that since it's not actually the same woman. And the Collins family are really just a bunch of yeah, you could hardly call them a family. They they barely know each other, and they're, they're a miserable bunch. And, as it turns out, most of them have secrets. And most of these are, you know, actually interesting. 
Yes, all of that was just plot. Now, from the trailer and interviews with Burton and such, a lot of people have been wondering, is this you know, like a straight comedy? No. It, it is a comedy, it's a dark comedy, but it's also horror, fantasy, a dark love story, and a drama, really. It's, it's very much about a family and, you know, just, yeah, family and the, the bond of family is one of the main themes and you know, introduced quite early on. And for taking place in the 70s and for all the clips you see in the trailer, those are actually maybe half of the 70s jokes in the film. You know, other than that, it takes place in the 70s, and the film is definitely a love letter to the 70s, but it doesn't constantly feel the need to remind you that it's the 70s, or at least not in an overt or jokey fashion. Like, the fashion is the 70s, the sets and, uh, you know, the music, the soundtrack is great. You know, they got some really good you know, 70s tunes. I I don't know if, like, I, I don't remember how old Burton is, but he, he might have enjoyed the 70s from this film, you know, wanted to do a tribute to the decade. And it does really feel like someone wanting to sort of, you know, tell us about the 70s or remind us about the 70s in the case of people who are older than me. And, you know, not just, like, you know, make it the butt end of jokes. It, the casting is quite good. Most of the, you know, roles are quite well cast. And just the, the characters are really engaging. You know, Johnny Depp, I mean, Tim Burton casts Johnny Depp, like, you know, automatically nowadays. But in this Unlike Alice in Wonderland, he actually gives him something to do, you know, and this is why people love Burton and Depp, you know, either or and both of them together. When you give Depp something to <laughs> sink his teeth into, pardon the pun, he really goes for it, you know, his, I mean, he has an affinity for playing eccentric characters, and casting him as a two centuries old vampire, you know, who's out of touch with the time that he finds himself in, is just, you know, a stroke of genius. It's perfect for him. And the character is not this clean cut kind of, he is a vampire. And not everything that, you know, there, there are things that come with being a vampire that are not very pleasant, and the film doesn't shy away from that. You know, he is in part a tragic figure, actually. He's not a role model, you know, and he's, he's our lead character, but you couldn't really call him a hero, not entirely. You know, that's interesting. You know, it's, it's nice to have a lead character who we can't just, you know, say, oh, I, he does exactly what we should all do in that situation, you know. He's, he's a more well-rounded character than that. Michelle Pfeiffer, I, I forget her character name, but she's basically the head of the family until Barnabas returns, and she's, she's a strong, independent woman who protects her family, you know, and who really cares about the family and the estate. And the, Again, the trailer really focuses on the... just the, the comedy aspects, and those are definitely there. It is part comedy, but... You know, it's it's a Burton film. It's it's a healthy mix of these various genres. This is not entirely as strong as some of his earl older older stuff. You know, this is not Beetlejuice. It's not Edward Scissorhands, but it is a really good film, and it is more of a return to form from him than you know other stuff we've seen recently. It's it's a lot better than Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> I'm not sure, comparing it to something like, 
you know, Demon Bar Barber of Fleet Street. Sweeney Todd, that's what it's also called. I don't know. Sweeney Todd might be the slightly better film, but this one uh, overall feels more Burton-esque, maybe. Now, the... The humor is, you know, in, in addition to just dark humor, we have some really great, very Burton-y jokes. You know, the, the kind of jokes that, I don't know, may, maybe other people would think of them, but he's one of the only people who'd actually film them. And just, you know, the, the, there is some of the dirty humor of, you know, something like Batman Returns, you know, with the, the Penguin and all that. And and the cat, you know. And it also just... I gotta talk about the production design. It is fantastic. They actually built... What's it called? Collinsport, I think, is the, the town. You know, they, they couldn't find something that looked enough like it. That's, that's what I read. You know, I, I believe this is accurate. So they, they built it. You know, because that's Burton. If, you know, he wanted a specific look and they couldn't find it, so they had to build it. And it looks fantastic. Again, very 70s, but not in a sort of on-the-nose kind of way, you know. And the... And, and just the, the overall you know, style and feel. It's, it's a very visual film, as with all of his, you know... All of the films by him that matter, anyway. And... It certainly gives us some visuals that I haven't seen in any other movies. And I may be proven wrong, but I think this is a movie that people will still remember years from now. You know, it will it may not be remembered as one of his best, but it will be rewatched and, you know, enjoyed again. The acting is quite good. I can't remember all the actors' names. Eva, Eva, I think Eva Green, as the witch, is just delightful. You know, she has this just evil, wicked smile, and just the, the, this charm to her. And you really believe? I mean, she does want Barnabas back. You know, there is that thing. Of, it's it's not just like blind. Out of that, there, again, there there are layers to it. She she loves him, but she hates him. It is that kind of you know she she is jealous. She and she is you know there is that saying hell hath no rage like a woman scorned. I think when that woman happens to be a witch, you gotta multiply that by like a factor of ten or something. You know, she is vicious, and you you really believe. That you know, if if I saw Eva Green on the street and she you know she gave that smile, I I'd run in the other direction, you know. And that actually does also bring me to this is gonna sound really chauvinist, but man, Burton has taste in women. <laughs> I mean, not only are they great actors, the women in this movie, but they look fine, you know. I, Helena Bottom Carter, of course, you know, again, like with Depp, you know, Burton has him on speed dial, wasn't that the, the college humor skit with, you know, making, Tim Burton's making a new movie, he's got Depp and Bottom Carter on speed dial. Ava Green, Michelle Pfeiffer, I don't remember her name, but the woman who plays Josette and her, you know, and the, the new, you know, person in the household, which is actually also, they have this great way of using her as a proxy for the audience in the, you know, first couple of scenes after, once we see what happens to Barnabas, we are introduced to this new woman who looks exactly like Josette, who we've just seen die. And we don't know exactly who she is at that point, but she is a proxy for the audience. So when she goes into Collinsport, she's there uh, to, to teach David, the, you know, the boy of the family, young boy of the family, and he, you know, she, she is introduced to 
you know, various aspects of Collinwood and told a little bit of family history and just that's how we meet several of the characters, you know, before Barnabas comes in because Barnabas is... Barnabas is going to steal the show once he actually arrives. You know, you can't use him to introduce characters. We need to already know them because they're just going to be dumbfounded by this vampire showing up, you know. So they they use the Josette character. But, but yeah, anyway, she looks fantastic. Chloe Moretz is still jailbait, so I will hold off on further comment for a few more years. At least I believe that's the case. Effects are great. And it's not a it's not a movie that relies on them, but just yeah. You know, again, like with all the Burton movies, he uses it to forward the the story or actually do something. Actually, I could talk a little bit about one of these scenes that we see. Realize that I haven't seen enough movies, and this is not a spoiler because the trailer gives it away. Excuse me. There is a sort of love scene between Barnabas and Angelique, excuse me, the witch. And, excuse me, and since they are, excuse me, both supernatural creatures of formidable strength, this scene is quite un untraditional. In, you know, they, they are just... <laughs> because sex isn't always just two people lying still. Sometimes it's very passionate. And when the people having this passionate sex are capable of clinging to walls and, you know, throwing each other into walls without taking any damage, and such, well, the lovemaking will <laughs> change depending on such. And it's just, it's a really memorable scene, you know. It's also, the film has a fantastic climax. I suppose that more or less does it. But yeah, it's, it's a film of several elements, and most of these elements do come together quite well. You know, I, I'm not sure there are really any of the genres that don't work out, you know. And most of the characters are, again, you know, interesting and engaging, you know, and you... Yeah, you, you get into this conflict of Barnabas trying to rebuild the, you know, the Collins name. And I should perhaps mention Jackie Earl Haley. I like the guy. And when I say that, you're, you probably know what's coming next. I didn't think he was that funny in this. And I, I think this is the first thing I see where he's trying to be funny. So it might just be that he's not that good at that, you know. And again, he, yeah, his Freddy wasn't terribly funny either. He does have funny moments, definitely. Several of them quite early on, but just several of the things with him that I think were meant to be funny just really aren't. And I think it is mostly his performance. But with that said, I mean, he, he's this, he's the caretaker, but he's just constantly drunk. And, you know... Yeah, they, they have some fun with that. And there's also this... I don't even remember her name, and she doesn't have a... That's a spoiler. Anyway, there's this ancient woman cleaning the, the house, and she's just... Pretty much every time you see her, there's a sight gag involved. And again, the vast majority of these work, and some of them are just hilarious. There are a few that don't, but just, she's, she's a really funny character also. I think that pretty well covers it. But yeah, you know, if you like Tim Burton, 
definitely go check it out. It's, it's not his best, but it's closer to a return to form, you know, than other of his recent works. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.